When we think about pi, we often think about this formula. The circumference of a circle is equal to pi times the diameter. But what actually is pi? And why do we use it in this formula? This is Mr. Butler Maths, and in this video we're going to use a little bit of maths to deepen our understanding of pi. To start with, let's just review circles. So, this is a circle. This point here is called the centre or the origin of a circle. This yellow line is the diameter, and that is the distance from one edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle through the centre. And this pink line is the radius, and that is the distance from one edge to the centre of the circle and the radius is always half of the diameter. Now, if I unwrap the circle, I get what we call the circumference. That's the length around the outside. So as we remember from our formula for pi, circumference is pi times the diameter. So let's take a deeper look into circumference and diameter. We're now going to look at the diameter and circumference of three different circles. So let's put in a little table so we can record what we see. I'm also going to create a ruler so we can measure the diameter and circumference of our circles. So let's start with a circle that has a diameter of three. From one edge to the other edge through the center, that is three units. Let's now move that back to zero and unwrap our circle to find the circumference. And I see it's 9.42. My measurement is a bit more precise than what we can just read off the ruler, but it is 9.42. Now let's have a look at the ratio. We calculate the ratio by dividing the circumference by the diameter, and we get 3.14. So the diameter times by 3.14 gives us the circumference. Let's now have a look at a different circle. This time, we're going to start with a diameter of 2. I'm going to roll that back to the start of my ruler and unwrap it, and I see the circumference is 6.28. Now the ratio I find by dividing the circumference by the diameter. So I do 6.28 divided by 2, and again, I get the ratio 3.14. So I've changed the diameter, and that means the circumference has changed, but the ratio has stayed the same. Now let's look at a third circle. Let's keep things straightforward with a diameter of 1. So this circle has a diameter of 1. I'm now going to roll it back, and then unwrap it, and I see it has a circumference of 3.14. Now I've seen that number before, but not in the circumference column. Let's work out the ratio and see if that's the same. So to find the ratio, I do the circumference divided by the diameter, and I get 3.14 again. So from our measurements, we are consistently getting a ratio of 3.14. And in fact, this is true for every circle. No matter how big or small your circle is, the ratio between the circumference and the diameter is always going to be 3.14. In fact, it's not quite going to be 3.14. It's going to be a little bit bigger than that. It's going to be 3.14159. Okay, I'm going to stop there because this ratio actually has an infinite number of digits. And instead of writing out all these digits every time we want to find the circumference, we use a symbol to represent it. And that symbol is pi. So to return to the start, when we think about pi, we think about it in terms of the circumference is pi times diameter. But if we rearrange this, we can see that pi is equal to the circumference divided by the diameter. That's the same as the ratio between the circumference and the diameter. Pi is something that we call an invariant, which means it stays the same regardless of the context, or in this case, the size of each circle. So by looking at a few different types of circles and recording our observations, and then rearranging our formula, I hope I've been able to help you deepen your understanding of what pi is. I'm going to leave it there for this video, and if you found this video useful, feel free to leave a comment outlining any other topics you'd like me to make a video on. Cheers!